Hello, everybody, and um, thank you for clicking on this video. Welcome to another teaching time. Today, we're going to look at after the rapture, during tribulation, there's going to be people here. What are you leaving for them? Think about this. You know, we spend all this time looking at who the Antichrist might be, what day are we going to get out of here, debating all kinds of different topics, and everybody kind of wants to be right, you know, and everybody's like, like me, I know I'm right because mine is from Scripture. Um, and, I mean, like other people, I'm like, I, I listen to somebody and somebody's saying something that's not scripture. I'm like, oh, can't believe they say that. So I got to go back and, and give them my, well, you know this and you know this and you got to do this. And you spend so much time obsessing over this and doing this and looking at stuff. How much time do we spend thinking about people that are going to be left behind? And the thing is, there are going to be people left behind. And they are going to be, be people that you know that are left behind. You know it in your heart. You know it in your gut. You, there are just some people that have rejected God or some people who want nothing to do with you had to tell them. But there may be more people than that. You know, I think back to, is it Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins? Um, the, that's the church, too. I mean, I know the bride's the church, but that's the church, too. You know, they're waiting for the bridegroom to go back. And they light the way back to the father's house because the whole town's going, if you understand this story um, from a, a cultural perspective, half of them don't have the oil. That's the Holy Spirit. They come back to the door afterwards. After they get it, the door is closed because the church is hidden away in heaven in the father's house. And they knock on the door and it said, verily, verily, I don't know you. I never knew you. I mean, come on. There are half those people, half of them are people that, thought they were going. Okay, there's a lot of people today that think they're going, but they're not. The question, why? Oh, that's real simple. Go with me to, oh, I don't have my, sorry about that. I don't have my, there it is. I'm going to pull this up in my phone. We're going to go to Matthew 7 real quick. Just want to give you a little context beforehand about why this is so critical that we understand this. See, a lot of people understand this scripture Matthew 7, starting in 13, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go by it, because the narrow gate is a difficult way and leads to life, and there are few who find it. Now, what's the reason for that? Why is the difference between the narrow way and the, and the, and the wide way? Well, the next verse. You got to, especially in Matthew, get rid of those little breaks. Don't think it's like a change in thought. These are long statements that Yeshua made. And, and they go in context. It's not a disconnected little paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. There were no paragraphs. These little page breaks, they weren't there. Ignore them, okay? Um, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing and inward, inwardly are ravenous wolves. I want to look at a word real quick just to get some understanding. Um, you can argue with me if you want. Matthew was written in um, Matthew was written in Hebrew, not Greek. There's no way that you were writing something to the Hebrews or to the Jewish people in Greek at the Hellenization period. They would not have listened. See, when you say be careful of false prophets, you're thinking about prophets like somebody who's giving a prophecy. Is that what that word means? In Greek it does, but in Hebrew it does not. It could, but it's not. Um, the, in Hebrew, it's a spokesman, a speaker, or prophet. I think what they're telling us here is beware of false teachers. The the spokesmen, the speakers, the pastors in the pulpit. That's the problem. That's what scripture is telling us. Anyhow, you, you don't know who it's going to be. So seriously, put some time into this. What are you going to leave behind? Oh, when do you leave it? Well, Rosh Hashanah. If you don't understand that Rosh Hashanah is the rapture, check out my other videos. And I know people argue, disagree with this. I get a lot of these people saying, no man knows the day of the hour. No man knows the day of the hour. Ah, ah, no man knows the day of the hour. But you know what? That means Rosh Hashanah. It's a Jewish idiom. Look it up. Do your homework. Okay? It's the last trump. You know, last trump, twinkling of an eye. That's Rosh Hashanah. Do your homework. This year, Rosh Hashanah is September 26th. I know there's all these people, different Hebrew calendars. Da, da, da. I'm pretty confident on September 26th. But is that the day it happens? Maybe not. 
because if they don't see the sun or the moon, the, the new moon, it doesn't start. You can go another couple of days. Now, the other interesting thing, let me check and give you exact dates. Um, so, you know, it could be a couple of days. Sometimes I think the calendar can be on. is the high holy days, the most important days on the Jewish calendar, 10 days. That represents Yom Kippur to, excuse me, Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, which represents tribulation. Um, no, I'm not clicking the right place. Anyhow, here we go. Um, but the day, the Sabbath in between or the Shabbat in between is known as the Shabbat of return. I've looked it up. I can't find anything else on it. I talk to Jewish people. They don't know. They're just, it's a Shabbat of return. It's just what it is. Shabbat of return. That sounds like maybe that's when Yeshua comes and returns for us. So in September 26th, the Sabbath is Friday night, the 30th to Saturday, the 1st. Am I saying that's the day of the rapture? No, no. Am I saying this year is a year of the rapture? No, but I, I firmly believe it's not this year. We have to wait seven more years. I can't see that. But then again, seven years ago, I would have said, you can't, I can't see going seven years. So we don't know. We know the day. We know the hour. We don't know the year. But it's looking like it. And actually, the 2930 is sort of the end of a time frame based on some other timelines. I can't see it going past that at the latest. But anyhow, so we need to leave something behind for these people. Think about it. Their eternity could be in your hands. You could change somebody's eternity by what you leave during this time. Because if you don't take the mark of the beast and you don't worship him, at the when it's all over, you may have to lose your head, but you're going to be in the kingdom of God. That's, that's the purpose. All right. So first thing is write a letter. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to write and how to word it because you need the Holy Spirit to do that. Um, what I write is probably unique to the person that comes into my house. What you write would be the the, the unique to what people that that would be unique to the people that come into your house. And I trust the Holy Spirit would work through me and and through you in writing this letter. But I'm going to give you some ideas of some components to for this letter. Okay. Um, <clears throat> first of all. Do not do anything electronically. Do not assume any electronic devices are going to work. Do not assume that there's going to be an internet. Do not assume that your house is going to have electricity. Seriously. You, yeah, I think it's going to get real bad real quick. We don't know what exactly is going to happen. I mean, you can follow the 21 judgments, you know, it's this, the seals, the trumpets, the bowls, and you get an idea what's going to happen there. But, you know, realistically, logistically, we don't know what's going to happen. So leave a paper Bible. Out of anything you leave, the Bible is the most important thing you can leave. Don't like say, go to this app, do this, do that. No, 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 no. Leave paper Bibles. If you don't have one, get one. You should have it. Seriously. Um, and I, I'm serious about this. I keep saying seriously. All right. The Bible, first thing. Don't be afraid. Leave passcodes to your bank accounts, to how they can get on your computer to write checks. I mean, if they can. You never know. It may work. If you're raptured out of here, you don't need it. They ain't letting it in in heaven. Besides, in heaven, gold is like the, the found, um, pavement is gold. We don't need any of our money from here. Um, I'm sorry, just reading my notes here. Um, think about this. You know, what is true religion? I mean, how can you tell somebody, I know it's take care of widows and orphans, all this stuff without being able to feed and clothe them. So the first thing is, what resources are in your house? Spell it out. You got some hidden money. You got this. I'm a prepper. I've got a few things stashed away here and there, food, this, that, whatever, water purification, different things. I've got gardens out back. I got chickens. Whoever comes into my house from a standpoint of what's going on in this world, oh, my goodness, they're going to love what they find. Wow, they're going to be set. They'll be rich food-wise, but um, they're going to get a lot of other stuff too. And that's what I want to talk about. Um, make sure when you leave your your notes with the Bible, you, you got to talk about things. 
how did you know? I mean, think about it. You know, I just saw all these people disappear. You're my neighbor. You disappeared. The world's gone absolutely batshit crazy. And my neighbor knew about it. How did he know? Write it out. Give scripture. Tell them. That gives you credibility. Now, this is maybe a neighbor, a friend, whatever, that you've tried sharing Jesus before and they didn't believe you. Well, they're going to believe you now. But leave a note in there about, about how you knew and how you knew to read this or to leave this for them. I mean, that's going to blow somebody's mind. Think about it. If you come into somebody's house hoping to find some food and you find this long, detailed thing telling you all this stuff, showing you where the resources are, that's going to blow my mind, you know? It's like, what is this, from Nostradamus or something? No, it's from something that's real. It's from the Bible. All right. So your resources and everything. Talking about that, what can they use from a practical standpoint? It's, it's hard to get somebody to listen to their eternity and this and that when they're hungry, cold, and whatever. Or maybe they're hot. I don't know. Um, what did they miss? Okay, you, you left all your stuff, you told them how you knew. You need to explain in detail what they missed. They missed the rapture of the church, what is the rapture. Give verses. What does it mean? Your own words, the Holy Spirit will speak through you, give verses. Um, and the thing is, you want them opening that Bible. So you're giving verses. If you don't know them, look them up. All right? Um, then the next thing is, what do they need to do next? And the bottom line is, they cannot take the mark of the beast. Um, if you're going to go to Revelation chapter 20, starting in verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So it's going to cost them their head not to take this mark. And we also know that the mark allows them to buy or sell. Keep, keep that hands and foreheads thing working in your head. Okay, keep it there. We're going to touch on it a little later. Um, so you got to make sure they know this mark of the beast is coming. They can't buy or sell without it. And they got to be okay with that, even if they get decapitated, because that's their only chance to enter the millennial kingdom. Otherwise, they're swimming in a lake of fire. Give them the verses. Show this to them. They need to know this. You follow me? All right. But see, I think that the um, Mark of the Beast has a spiritual component as well. So let's take a, a closer look at this Mark of the Beast, and we're going to go some places in the Old Testament. See, I think they should understand this. And you can present it to them in your way, um, do what you need to do. Um, let's go to Revelation 13, 11 through 18. Revelation 13, 18. Here we go. 13 through 18. Here we go. And this is a description of, okay, let's start at 11. Do the, do the whole little section here. Then he saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wounds was healed. This is our false prophet here. And he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on earth inside a men. Imagine if you would see that. This person, whatever, doing these amazing things, making fire come down from heaven. Wow, that's God, right? No, it's not. Hear it out. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs, which he granted, which he has granted, was granted to do in the sight of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. And he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause many, and, and cause as many, uh, as, I'm sorry, bleh, and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. 
and no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of the name. Here, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. And oh my goodness, people spend all this time looking at 666, the number of the man. Da, 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 da. What is it? I remember Ronald Wilson Reagan, six letters, six letters, six letters. He's the Antichrist. I guess he's not. And they've been doing this for a long time. I don't really get hung up in that. I mean, I do a video on the on the mark of the beast. It might be worth to check out. This is what you need to be warning people about. This is important. But there's a spiritual component about this. Think about his right hand of the forehead. The hand represents actions, the forehead, knowledge, you know, your thoughts, your actions. Okay. Sounds good, right? No, it is. And it can go into, you could, I could pull a bunch of Bible prophets, Bible scriptures about that. But let's go to Deuteronomy. Um, which one of you first? Let's do Deuteronomy 6. See, hand, forehead, hand, forehand, mark of the beast there. Deuteronomy 6, I know we're going into the Old Testament. No, it was not fulfilled. This is not just for the Jews. If you if you understand, if you believe that you're not following God's commandments, check out some of my videos on it. Um, the one about lawlessness. It's one of my first ones I ever did. It's that important. Lawlessness, a terminal condition. Check it out. All right. This is called the Shema, one of the most important foundations of scripture in the Old Testament. It's in Deuteronomy 6, starting in verse 4. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, that's a plural God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Remember when Jesus was asked what's the most important law? He went right here, one of them, one of two. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. And this is all of the law. All the do this, don't do that, all those things. That's what he's talking about. You shall teach them to your children. And you shall talk with them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them on a sign on your hand and between. Excuse me. Listen carefully. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And you shall... And they shall be as frontlets, frontlets between your eyes, hand and forehead. You get that? Hand and forehead. Hmm. There's a connection. All right. Um, another connection. Remember we talked, remember you saw that beast doing that miraculous signs? Where does that come from? Understand, whenever a teacher in the New Testament, whatever, talks about something, gives you a little piece of something that's in the Old Testament, he's telling you to look back at it. John's telling you to look back here, hand and forehead. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy. What's the next one? 13. Remember the false prophet is making you do that? <coughs> false prophets making these signs and wonders. Hmm. One through five. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams who gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass. Then he is from God. No, that's not what it says. And the sign or the wonder comes to pass of which he spoke to you saying, let us go after other gods, small g, not our God, which you have not known and let us serve them. He's telling you to worship this idol. That's definitely bad. Okay, so he's doing this. He's doing these wonders, saying he's going to do it, doing them and telling you to do something that's not of God. This is what this scripture is talking about. Revelation 13, we see the fulfillment of it, what's going to happen. So John is just elaborating on what Moses said in Deuteronomy. All right, let's keep reading. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you. Does God test us? Oh, yeah. They're talking about it all the time. See, God tests, Satan tempts. If you test somebody, you're hoping they pass. If you tempt them, you're hoping they fail. All right. The Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. This is going back to Deuteronomy, the hands and foreheads, loving God with everything you got. You shall walk after the Lord your God, fear him, and keep his commandments. That's Old Testament stuff. Um, 
and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. Cling on to that, those commandments. I know, I know, it's been fulfilled. No, it hasn't. I do a video on that. Has the law been fulfilled? Check it out. Um, but that prophet or dreamer or dreams shall be put to death. And it goes on and reads there. Does the, does the uh, false prophet get put to death? Yeah, along with the Antichrist. They are the first fruits to the lake of fire, a place we do not want to go. Now, the, for them, it's kind of cool because they get to have first choice of real estate there. Although it's all a lake of fire and there's no shoreline that they can get on. So that's not really good. Folks, clock's ticking, running out of time, got to have Jesus, got to share Jesus. But there's going to be people who are not going to accept him. Okay, look out for him. Leave something. You have no idea how the Holy Spirit will use what you leave. God bless you. Maranatha. Hey, if you like this, click on, I mean, um, go to my, oh, what is it called on YouTube? Go to my channel, like it, friend me, you know, follow me, whatever, share the video. God bless you guys. Take care.